Hey, it's me, it's Nathan. I'm back with another tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video tutorial, uh, but I've got a new recording set up and I'm hoping that it's going to allow me to do uh, recordings and tutorials a little bit more often. So you can see my face this time, which is a little bit different, um, but we're gonna be looking at a painting today and this painting, I wanted to, before we jump into it, I wanted to give you a little bit of, back, of a background of what it is. Um, I did a few days ago, I posted a blog post on some steps that I take to keep from becoming overwhelmed. And it's really easy to do that when you're learning something new in art, whether it's just drawing or painting period, or you've, you're, you're, you're tackling a new medium or whatever it is, and you're, you're learning something new. It's really easy to become uh, overwhelmed or frustrated. And for me, the past couple of years, I've been learning to draw portraits and paint portraits, and I wanted to get better at doing them. Uh, for me, it's the, it's the hardest subject there is to learn. And I just wanted to take the time to become better at it. And so there are times when I would get a little bit frustrated, a little bit overwhelmed with the complexity of the subject. And to the point where I would think like, you know, do I even know how to draw? Did I forget how to draw? What's going on? So part of the part of the steps there, one of the steps that I would take that I mentioned in the blog post was to have a, uh, a go to subject, something that you're familiar with, that you um, maybe have painted or drawn many times that uh, you don't have to think a whole lot about that you uh, you can do that, uh, you know, will bring your confidence back and kind of recenter you. For me, it's it's birds, it's fish, fox, cats, dogs, um, things like that, wildlife type portraits um, that are easy for me to do that I've done a ton of them. And um, it's just something I don't have to struggle with. Um, in some cases, like this fox, I can do um, without reference. So let's uh, go ahead and, and jump in and, and take a look at it. All right, so this time I want to show you guys, I want to start off with um, the final painting, and then we're going to go back to step one, and I'm going to show you each step um, in case you want to follow along um, as we build up to this, to this final result. Um, I'm going to make the sketch available as a download, and I'll, I'll link that in the description in case you want to use the same sketch that I did um, to follow along with the painting as we go. And I'm going to do it this way in hopes that the video won't be an hour long. So you can pause it and you can pause it at each step and then you can you can um, uh, work along that way. And and hopefully the video itself will be shorter and a little bit easier to consume versus some of my previous tutorials, which end up being really long. So, OK, here's the final painting and we're going to go from from here to the sketch in just a sec. But I want to talk about a couple of the products that I'll be using um, to uh, to paint with. So first up, I'm going to be using a couple of brushes from the um, Ultimate Brush Toolbox watercolor set. And I'm going to be um, using uh, a few effects from the Ultimate Watercolor Effects, which is from the Ultimate Effects Toolbox which is just a set of um, all sorts of different watercolor washes and effects that you can use as stamps to, um, to stamp in and then um, um, work with and manipulate. Now, if you have the master watercolor brush set, um, you can follow along in the exact same way. You can use brushes from that set, which are similar to the ones that I'll be using. And then of course, uh, that set includes a ton of washes, which are similar to the, um, to the ultimate of watercolor effects. Or, of course, you can always use your own watercolor brush set that you like to use. OK, another product that is in use here is um, the, the, the paper texture that you're seeing. I'm going to turn that off so you can see the difference. Um, this is from the Ultimate Canvas Creator. This is from the Wet Media Set, the watercolor set. Um, it's a set of uh, paper textures and paint effects. So there's paint effects here and paper textures here that are giving it that sort of um, that realistic watercolor look with all that paper texture and different paint and bloom effects that are happening um, beyond what the brushes themselves are creating. OK, I'm going to turn those off and we're going to have a look at the sketch. 
So this is my basic sketch here. I'm going to turn this paper back on. So this is my basic sketch here. And this was created with just a pencil brush. Um, show you real quick. So just roughing this in as basic shapes, I'm using these two, a couple different grips on my pen is th this for very uh, loose shapes with the side of the uh, pen. And then this, what I would say is a normal pencil grip that I use for more uh, details. So side of the pencil for roughing in uh, tip of the pencil for detail. Okay, so we've got some basic shapes here. We've got this sort of 3D cube that's uh, helping me decide where the, the nose and the mouth is. It's guideline for the eyes, circle for the head, the triangle here for the ears, and then sort of this diamond shape that's uh, uh, just sort of guiding me to where the uh, portion of the neck and body that we can see. All right. Now from this rough sketch, I created a clean sketch. Now the clean sketch is what I'm going to be using as a guide for the painting. So the rough sketch was a guide for the clean sketch. Clean sketch was a guide for the painting. So you can see the difference there. It's just much more uh, detailed uh, without getting crazy detail. It's just a, to give me a rough guide for where the fox's features are and then just kind of some squiggly lines to represent the, the fur. All right. Okay, so the first layer, what we want to do, I, I, I sort of like this sort of hit me just a few weeks ago while I was painting that you this concept of like sneaking up on a painting. So you don't want to just go in with like your boldest color, you know, your 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 most opaque uh, color. Um, you you want to kind of you want to sneak up. So like you don't want to just go bam, you know, with this really just deep dark color. You don't want to start from this point. You want to go with something that is just more light and then build up like you're 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 sneaking up on the final result. So you're going going in real light and real um, real soft and then you're getting darker and building it up as you go. Just little things like that that help me uh, to remember things as I go. Just little little ideas and things that make it easier for me. All right, so I started with this wash. This is the initial base wash and it's it's a very light orange color somewhere right about somewhere in here. And I'm using this uh, textured round from the ultimate watercolor set. And I've got the opacity turned down to about 50%. And as I'm going, I'm just really lightly roughing in these shapes. And then as I lift the pen up and come back, it gets a little bit darker. Now this is kind of a hard edge brush. So I take the smudge tool and within the same set, here's the texture round down at the bottom. There's some smudgers uh, within the same set is the uh, more water smudger smudge tool. And I'm just going to blur some of the hard edges that I don't want. Leave some there and we'll blur some. Okay, so that is how I'm creating this layer. Now, keep in mind that for this particular fox, the light is coming from this direction. So the, the majority of my darker colors are going to be over to this side, the right side of the fox, like underneath his chin and um, his eyes here. And most of this up here up top is going to be lighter. Okay, so most of the darker colors are going to be here. So this is our initial base wash that we painted in. So next up, I want to do like some mid-tones. Still not going to go fully dark yet. I'm just going to add in some mid-tones. And these are a little bit darker color. And they're just, I'm just, again, I'm adding them in those places that I just showed you that where the, the, the darker side falls or the shadows fall. So this will be the same, same concept as before just using a little bit darker color. So I've got this sort of uh, deeper rusty red color and then this sort of like um, raw umber kind of color. This is a little bit more brown, probably down in here somewhere. Again, just painting these colors and then blurring some of the edges.
All right, so now get rid of that layer. So now we're gonna we're gonna go to the darks, some of the darkest darks in the painting, which is gonna be in some of the details. I'll turn it off and back on again, so you can see it's underneath the chin, it's the mouth here, it's the nose. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see some of the detail in the nose and in around the eyes here. And again, I'm just using the sketch as a guide and just painting it. So to get this darker detail, I would probably switch maybe to this perfect brush and full opacity. And let me get on this layer and just see how you can, again, this, this is a semi-transparent brush, but you can get a little bit darker, a little bit quicker than versus the uh, texture ground. Okay, so we worked, we got three layers. We started with the base and then we added some midtone, which provided some uh, variation in color. And then we've got our darks. Okay, so now if I, if I turn the sketch on, if I turn the sketch off, I mean, the, the clean sketch, if I turn it off, you can see that we lose some of the detail around the fur. So what I mean is this, um, these squiggly lines here that are sort of representing the fur that's going out. Okay. All of these little squiggly lines. So as we do the next layer, we want to keep this bit of detail in mind of all these little directions of fur. So I'm going to turn on the detail layer and I'll show you again, what's happening here. So I'm taking these little, I'm sampling, going around sampling some of these darker colors right? Some of these colors around the edge. And we'll show you right here. If I turn the sketch off, you can see that I'm putting in some of these like fur bits, some of these fur, uh, fur details. So to do that, I would go and with the, probably the perfect round, you might could do it with the detail liner something like that's a small round brush with a hard edge. And if we just sample some of these colors, I'm going to do this on a new layer here and we take the size down a bit and we just kind of do some of these lines and I can even make it a little bit thicker. Some lines like this, and then you can take again, the smudge tool cause we want them to blend and just kind of blend out some of those edges. You can see the same thing happening here and here here, here, a little bit around the mouth here. There's some right there. Okay, we're just, just taking and, and drawing in some of the details and then blurring the edges. So if you're, if this was a traditional painting, because I like to think in terms of traditional, traditional paint, because I think it helps me to produce a more um, realistic digital painting. So these washes were painted, those initial wash layers, they were painted wet into wet, meaning that the paper was wet and we're adding in color and those colors are, are blending together. And that's what we're doing with the smudge tool is we're, we're, we're adding in some color, but then we're blending out some of those edges. So in order to come in with this, the, the fur detail, we would have to have waited for the paper to dry. So as, since the paper is dry, in order to blur, these lines like this, because they're going to appear with hard edges like that, we would need to add a little bit of water to blur out some of those edges. Okay. So now if we, if we look at it like our painting, like this is, this is getting close to a like done state. Like we're almost done with, with, uh, uh, the painting. I mean, from a, from a standpoint of it looking complete now, of course, we're going to take it quite a bit further, but from this point right here, we've added, we've got good contrast. We've got good detail. We've got good light and shadow. So everything is looking really good. So now I want to add a bit of white detail. So I'm going to turn that layer on so you can see now, what is the white detail doing? It's adding a bit of highlight and it's the exact same process that we just did on the detail layer. So in a traditional painting, you would do this with like white gouache or maybe acrylic, something that is uh, a paint that's opaque, an opaque white that you could paint on top of watercolor. So it's the exact same process. I'm going to use the same brush and 
going to paint real heavy here so you can see you can see it. Same process. I'm going to add in some white, but then I'm going to blend it in. I'm going to remove some, but not all of the hard edges because you can still see some of the hard edges that were created from the white paint. All right. So now we've got, I'm going to turn this on and off one more time so you can see the difference. It's mostly around the face. It's the edge of the nose here. There's probably a little bit maybe in the eye. Nope, the eye detail is right here. It's in this layer. So you can see what's happening there. All right, so now the final detail would be some whiskers. So if I turn that layer on, I did this with black and the uh, detail liner brush. So if I'm make sure I'm on a new layer. Okay, so if we just put in some lines like this, they're really stark. They stand out too much. They don't blend in with the painting enough. It doesn't look real. So if we take the smudge tool again and just lightly smudge a little bit of the edges, just so that it's just enough that it looks like maybe some of the paper was still wet and you know some of it blended in to the painting. And it just, it looks more real to me, just taking the extra bit of time to just blend in some of those edges, make the whiskers feel a little bit more like they're a natural part of the painting and they're not just sitting on top of it. Okay, so here is our base painting, right? This is uh, all of our uh, initial washes that we painted in to build up all the contrast. And then we painted in our details and we painted back in some highlights. So now I want to push the painting a little bit further towards more abstract watercolor with some washes. And the reason I want to do that is because watercolor has a tendency to be a little bit abstract to allow some some washes and some blooms and some splatters and colors that run together and just just things like that that are just inherent to watercolor. So let's take a look at the first uh, wash layer, which is down here underneath everything else. It's a background wash. Um, I'm going to turn that on and off so you can kind of see what's happening there. So it's almost like the paint just sort of bleeds out a little bit from, from the painting. And I think that's a really, really nice touch and a really cool effect. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go on this layer and let's just sample maybe this sort of yellow color, maybe push it a little bit more towards like a yellow ochre kind of color there. Let's see. And I'm going to go to the, um, the watercolor uh, effects from the ultimate effects toolbox and let's go. These are all, these are all stamps that you can just place down. Um, but rarely do I ever just place them down and leave them. I like to move them, reshape them, um, maybe blend them a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take, uh, let's take this watery wash and let's just drop it here in the middle. And that's actually, well, we'll, we'll drop that one here and we'll do another one because that's pretty similar to what what I had before. Let's take, uh, let's take this one, just watery wash number two, make it a little bit smaller. We'll move it. Something like that. I'm going to combine those two layers. And what I mean by like, you saw me just, uh, click and, and move those around, but we may also need to, um, remove, I've got, the eraser tool, it's set to the loaded flat and I'm just going to remove some portions of that wash because I don't want it to cover up my highlights that I had already established in the painting. So that's an example of how I might use a wash to, um, I might place it, position it, and then edit it with eraser or smudge to, to sort of, um, allow it to, to blend more with the painting. Let's try. Let's try one more just to show you. Let's take something like something a little bit stronger. Maybe this soft wash number five. Place it there. 
so yeah so you can see that it's adding this big giant bloom effect and we would probably need to do a similar erase in the middle there but you can see how it adds just elements to the painting that weren't there before and if we wanted to to blend some of it blend some of the edges i'll show you a real good example of blending here in this next one let's let's go back to our original for the painting which is this one here and then I added another one, which, another one, which I called uh, Paint Run. And it's just down here at the bottom. So we'll turn it on and off. So this is a situation where I added a wash. Let's just take this one, maybe put it in there. And then I just took the blender tool there and just pulled it down so that it's looks like paint running down the page like that so you can see how you it, it very quickly it, it it's not as it originally was stamped we 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 blended it in to fit within the composition and the arrangement of the painting all right so let's go back to this one and then i also added this dark wash i'm gonna turn it on and off it's just right here it just it's just to further, uh, or just to bring this shadow area, this darker area down. Uh, so there wasn't this hard line right here. I just covered that up with a little bit of a wash. Okay, so this one right here, this is actually, um, this was an accident. I'm gonna turn this one on. It's just right here. And I think, I think it was one of these maybe down here. One of these, maybe the, uh, one of these splatters it might've been this one right here. I'm not sure was one of these that I was just trying different ones and I think I clicked and then just clicked or tapped here, tapped here and here just real quick without really, um, I didn't really do it on purpose. And, but then I kind of liked it. Like it was like a happy accident or something that might happen in a uh, traditional painting where you just kind of, you know, allow the paint to do something and you just kind of like the end result, even though it was mostly the paint that did all the work. So I just left that one there because I thought, hey, that's kind of fun to just have an, a happy accident in a digital painting. So now I want to add some colored splatters. So here I just, I'm going to add these splatters, but I'm going to show you there actually is a rhyme and reason to adding these splatters. So what I do is I go around and I sample some of these colors. Like let's just take this really sort of bright red color. I'm going to create a new layer real quick and I'm going to use one of these. There's several splatter effects in here. I'm going to grab um, maybe this one. And if I just drop it right here. Okay, so you can kind of see. Let me get it where you can. Okay, so here's the whole splatter right here. And you can kind of see that there is direction to it. So I don't want to leave it just right there. I actually want to get it and move it so that the direction makes sense with the rest of the painting because all of my paint is typically kind of running out this way. So when I add these splatters, I want them to go in a direction that makes sense with the rest of the painting. I don't want them to be suddenly going this way when everything else is going that way or that way. That makes sense. I also don't want like this right here. I don't want these splatters to be over an area that would distract from the focal point, like over the eye, for example. I don't want that. So we definitely want to erase that. So I'm left with mostly those right there that I'm angling in the same direction as some of that paint. Or if I was to move it down here, I might turn it and angle it that way because I've already got some lines and some things that's, that are going in that direction. So I've added in some dark splatters here and I've added in some color splatters over here, but I like to also have some white splatters and I'm going to turn that on and off so you can see the difference that it makes. Somehow for me, the white splatters, it's like adding an extra bit of highlight and somehow it just, it sort of brings things a little bit more into focus in a way, because I think it's because of, of, of all the hard lines of the splattered dots, like it just somehow, it almost looks like a, an additional bit of rendering that, that wasn't there before. So if I turn them all off, you can see what I mean. Like it's 
before and then after. There's just something about that that just looks a little bit more finished and looks a little bit more uh, rendered. Okay, so the final thing, the final adjustment that I would make, or close to the final, would be to do uh, an overall color adjustment. And the way that I do that is, is to turn off the paper texture and then three finger swipe, copy all, and then I'm gonna put it up here and three finger swipe again, paste. So now we have a flattened uh, layer with the entire painting on it. I'm gonna turn the, I, I didn't want the paper texture to be included in that, so I turned it off. So I'm gonna turn the paper texture back on and I'm gonna go to uh, adjustments and color balance. I'm gonna make sure that here I'm in the shadows and I just wanna push the shadows to be more blue. And maybe we'll do that a little bit with the midtones. See what happens there. Yeah, so I'm getting a little bit of like more blue here and maybe a little bit more purple in some of these darker areas. And so it just gives a nice little variation in color. And it's, it's a lot of fun to play with those adjustments just to see what kind of effects that you can get. So here's the final adjustment for the painting that I did. I actually ended up a little bit more um, teal or a little bit more green in the shadows, which I think plays a little bit nicely, a little bit more nicely with uh, the oranges and yellows and the rest of the painting. So I'm going to keep that. And then lastly, I did a uh, another color adjustment, but this time with washes. So I created a new layer and I went back to my soft wash effects. Let's try maybe uh, maybe this one and a purple color. And I'm going to set this layer to you can try different different um, blend modes, but for this I went with screen. And I just stamped a few washes on the outer edge just to get a variation of like, it goes from like yellow to kind of orange and red and to pink. And I thought that that was a nice like color transition over the whole thing. I think it kind of takes a little bit away from maybe the traditional look into more of a digital look when you make adjustments like that. But I mean, I think that's okay. I mean, there's no, there's no rules, right? <laughs> there's no... There's no set rules. So there's my final uh, adjustment with the washes and the uh, layer blend mode set to screen. So that is my final painting for this one. All right, so that's it. What'd you think of this one? Let me know uh, what you think of the painting, what you thought of going through the process like this and, and showing you step-by-step step how it was made. Um, also, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos, future tutorials. I'd love some input on uh, what would be helpful and uh, what would help you to uh, uh, grow as an artist. And um, also, I have a newsletter on my website. It's called Artbox. I just launched it. And um, if you join up, you will never miss a new tutorial. You'll never miss a live session. You'll never miss a new product launch or product update. So um, it's a good thing. I'll put a link to it in the description as well. And all right, that's it. Uh, thanks so much, guys. See you next time.